testing, one, two, testing, one, two. I hope the audio works this time. My fan keeps running on my computer. Uh, my computer got hacked a couple days ago. My phone got hacked two weeks ago. And my bank account got hacked about a month ago. Um, on top of all that, as many of you know, I have been dealing with some very significant health issues. Um, and I don't know how much longer or how many interviews I have left to be able to do, quite honestly. And, and um, it, it took almost three months to get a diagnosis. I finally saw a really good neurosurgeon. And he was all business. He was very, very serious about my condition. They don't know what's causing it. It has an 85% mortality rate. I have um, vertebral basilary insufficiency. Um, not the arteries in my neck, not my carotid arteries, but the arteries that come up through my spine keep getting trapped because my ligaments are giving out. And um, the muscles clamp down in relation to that, and it's a really like fucked up thing to have. So I'm having a couple of strokes a day from this, and um, he was quite surprised, actually, that I haven't had any permanent damage, like visible damage in the way that I function, although I have quite a bit of damage on my MRI. So I'm dealing with that, and I'm going to be dealing with it for a while, but I wanted to get this video out today because I was supposed to go on RT, and I got bumped. I completely understand that uh, such is the nature of the news cycle and I'm putting up this video uh, and this is a special upload just for Team Red Eye um, and I'm going to put up another video on my channel, uh, Rad Chick channel, um, detailing uh, what it is that I wanted to talk about to RT uh, because they asked me, they wanted to talk about decontamination and they asked me what would I like to talk about and I told them I wanted to talk about Hillary's emails about Fukushima. And so I don't know if maybe there was something with like the verification, even though the emails are legit. I mean, they're on the government server. These were all released in January. And um, it'd be great if we could kind of like link what's going on with the Department of Justice right now and this um, investigation that they're doing and possible like grand jury uh, hearings. And the the information that was contained in the emails, but I'm interested just specifically in what was mentioned in regards to Fukushima. And the funny thing is, you know, like Hillary gave this long press conference when this first happened. It's like 25 minutes long where she's saying how, you know, she didn't want to walk around with two phones and all of this stuff. And she claimed that, you know, she has a problem dealing with technology. But what she didn't have a problem with is understanding how nuclear fallout works and she was 7,000 miles away at the time of the accident. So while Barack Obama gave his um, infamous speech in the Rose Garden and said that um, in, you know in the opinion of the US nuclear experts no radiation would reach our shores, what Hillary Clinton was telling her friends in the State Department and all of her buddies was that um, they need to stay inside during that time and, and not go outside. And if they do go outside, they needed to um, remove their clothes when they come indoors and their shoes and how to decontaminate everything. So she had extensive knowledge about how to avoid nuclear fallout. And, <laughs> you know, we only found out about this because of this email scandal. And nobody is talking about the story and how important this is, um, except for a couple of websites and, and one being NukePro, where he has actually um, screenshotted and, and attempted to go through the thousands of emails that were included in this dump of information, which came out of a Freedom of Information Act request. So he's been digging into this. Um, and he's done an excellent job and I will put a link below to the actual page where you can see the emails you can read them for yourself and you will see that they knew 
we were going to get nuked. Specifically, Hillary Clinton said radiation leak from the Fukushima reactor, and then of course there's the redaction. Um, somebody is working on that right now. There's a petition to get the unredacted version of this. Stay indoors if at all possible. There is nothing, no events, parties, sports, movies, etc., that are worth getting more exposure to radiation. The stuff travels far, very far. And then there's more information about the leak, how to take potassium iodide to protect your thyroid, which obviously didn't work for her because she's got thyroid problems. And I found out today Bernie Sanders has thyroid problems too. In fact, I think it's the same thyroid problem that she has. And you know, she was doing a lot of flying during this time. And in fact, there's emails where she is being encouraged. Um, yeah, look at this. Don't go outdoors unless it is necessary. There's emails where she is encouraged by her handlers or her advisors that she needs to go to Japan because it would be really great. And the number one issue that they are concerned with is what's going to happen to the Japanese economy because it's tied so closely with our economy. And she was really tired and had been traveling a lot in um, the Mideast and Libya. And I, and I don't re recall exactly if Benghazi happened before or after this. But they wanted her to go to Japan and sign this pact, you know, this treaty saying that we would keep importing fish, um, basically even if they're radioactive. And so now here we are at the five-year anniversary, and, you know, we're, we're getting all this, like, just BS information from mainstream news talking about, like, how the fish are getting tested and all of this Five years after Quake, Fukushima market battles to keep fishery items in stores. They're testing wet fish with Geiger counters in buckets. This is what, this is how they're testing. And this is like, this is not how you test fish. This is not how you test for radioactive contamination. The way that you test in order to do it properly is the fish needs to be dissected. Um, shortly after, after it's caught, they need to take the skin off, they need to separate the meat, they need to separate the neurological system, the eyes, the brain, the spinal cord, um, all of the organ systems, the, the gastrointestinal tract, the bladder, everything it needs to be isolated, then it needs to be dried to remove all the water because water shields radiation, and then ground to a powder and tested in a lead box, um, you know, under a very controlled environment, with a very expensive Geiger counter costing about $100,000. And they have to test each system of the fish, each part of the fish separately, and recalibrate the instrument in between each reading. That's how you properly test fish. What they're doing is using a cheap Geiger counter, and they're testing them in buckets, while the fish is still wet, full of water, and covered with water. So this is just complete bullshit, and nobody is, like, you know, counteracting any of this information. Nobody's even commented on this article from the Chicago Times, and it was published Thursday, March 10th. So, you know, that's where we're at. It's still a shit show, and I'm going to put up a longer video um, talking about the Wigner effect and the six celebrities that Loren Murray and I have been covering um, for the last couple of years and what has happened since. And you guys are going to be just shocked. You are going to be absolutely shocked with the information. Um, unfortunately, I've been too sick to put together like a new interview or really do any interviews. And I and it's unfortunate because I had a lot to say and I don't know how much longer I'm going to be able to say it. And, and that... Um, that really sucks. So there's a bunch of articles on my website, climateviewer.com, where we talk about the Wigner effect. I would highly, highly recommend anybody who, who wants to learn more to read this article from Cells to Soldiers and watch the video that goes with it. And I uploaded um, the ending to the Wigner Effect interview last night at midnight. There are um, two new videos with um, Never 
seen before video and audio. Um, it's Wigner number 11, War Against Humanity, and Wigner 12, The End. And these two uploads are completely different from the rest of the series. And when you listen to them, you'll see why. And the Loren was so brilliant in this segment, in these two segments, that I actually hung on to this audio for over a year because I needed to make something really special to go along with it and I didn't really know how to do it and I didn't want to just put out crap or rush the job and I wanted to take time and think about it and then I got sick and things happened and you know here we are but I got those up last night um, I'm going to continue the Wigner series that we were doing the 10 weeks of Wigner but I have so much information so much data at this point that it's almost impossible um, it's impossible for me to, to do to really work on this anymore and do a complete job like I, I need help like I need a staff to deal with this and that's never gonna happen so um, please watch those last two or the whole series if you've never seen it um, this ending has a dedication to Charlie McGrath as you probably know Charlie McGrath passed away in January and he was the first person to ever interview me about Fukushima. He gave me a chance to talk. And when people heard me on his show, then they wanted to interview me too. And if it weren't for Charlie, I could have never accomplished nearly um, what I did in the last five years. And it is a huge, huge loss to the activist um, community um, to not have him around any longer. And... I miss him a lot. So um, he's, you know, possibly one of the casualties of Fukushima. He was doing a lot of flying. He was flying back and forth to China for work. And when I did the last interview with him and we talked about, like, you know, cannabis for, for pain and health, and we talked about um, the pilots passing out and the six celebrities, and we talked about uh, radiation and how it affects mental function. And he and I had a really, like, great conversation off air about him specifically and he had just gotten out of the hospital and he told me he was doing all this flying and I was like dude you can't do this like can't you use Skype or go to meeting or one of those modalities do you have to go to China because you're getting exposed every time and he was already sick from um, probably from DU from being in the Gulf War and he had asthma and his asthma was just getting progressively worse and progressively worse and you know um, he passed away in January and it's a huge loss so here we are at five years five years of this constant bombardment of radiation and you know even the show that ran today on RT didn't talk about the coriums how they've never found them it didn't it really didn't talk about anything except how the government lied at the beginning which we know they do with all nuclear accidents so it's a little like discouraging to see that like there's there wasn't any like time or research or like real information that was given so I'm gonna this video is going on team rad I I'm gonna put up a second video on the rad chick channel today um, I will um, probably not be around too much in the next couple of weeks or months even and uh, hopefully though I will be back and I appreciate all the love and support that I've gotten from people um, and people that have donated to me to help with my my medical bills and stuff like that I can't even tell you how much um, that means to me and the letters and I mean really lengthy emails from people um, it's it's just been overwhelming and I um, I really don't know what to say we tried that's all we can do. So take care of everyone and uh, watch my channel for that upload later today.